Hello everybody, my name is Ray, I'm with Florida by Ski. Uh, this video is gonna be a little different than what you guys are used to. Uh, we're gonna do a little how-to on changing your oil on your Sea-Doo. Uh, these particular models that we own here, they're both equipped with the 170 horsepower naturally aspirated motor. Uh, in reading and in looking at things online, it seems like the procedure overall is the same across all models. I do know that the supercharged model does vary slightly. Uh, again, I don't own a supercharged model. We do have one of those that are in order for 2022. Uh, so I'll probably do another how-to once that model arrives and we have it in our possession. But again, you know, the idea here is to just show you guys how easy it is to care for your own watercraft at home. You know, you don't need to be a you know, full-blown mechanic. I mean, I fortunately have a lot of experience in working in the automotive world. But again, you don't even have to have that, right? Just some common sense, some regular tools, you should be able to get the job done. All right, so the first thing we're going to talk about are the tools that are required in order to do the job. Again, there's no drain plug to drain the oil on these things. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you have some sort of pump mechanism in order to evacuate the oil. Uh, we use the Holt Industries. It's probably a little bit of overkill for a watercraft, but you know, this is the same unit that I use to change the oil in both of my vehicles uh, that also do not have removable drain plugs. Obviously, you're going to want your oil change kit. Uh, strongly recommend stick to the manufacturer's uh, fluids anytime you do any sort of maintenance. Uh, you're also going to want to have handy your engine flush kit. Again, the idea here is you're gonna to wanna to warm up the oil uh, for a short period of time. You wanna start up the ski, uh, basically warm up the oil slightly so that it makes it much easier for this unit to evacuate all of the oil. And then you're gonna want an E10. I don't know if you can see that back there, but that is an E10 Torx. Uh, it's basically a reverse Torx. So it's the female version of a Torx drive. So again, you're gonna to wanna to have those handy uh, ultimately, that is going to be the tool that you will need in order to remove the oil filter housing and ultimately, you know, change out the oil filter. All right, moving ahead, we are going to go ahead, make sure that our uh, flush fitting is installed. Again, like I mentioned previously, we're going to want to get this engine slightly warmed. Again, you don't want to run it for too long but just enough to get the oil to temperature, maybe 30, 40 seconds or so. Uh, get the oil a little warmer so that it makes it easier for our uh, oil evacuation pump to basically extract the oil from the unit. So again, we're gonna fire this thing up. Now that we got the oil slightly warmed up to temperature, you're gonna to wanna to pull the dipstick out. It's probably a good time to check for, you know, any contamination, check your levels, etc., just to make sure everything is all good. So now that you have the tube going into the dipstick pool, next step is obviously you wanna make sure your pool is attached here. Uh, let me see here, this particular pump. We want to make sure that we are on evacuating and we'll give this a couple pumps. Looks like we finally have some oil coming through here. All right, so while this is draining, obviously to save time, what we want to do next is we want to pull this cover here. There's several bolts. So you can see here, there's a couple under here. Make sure you don't forget those. So what, how many? One, two, three, four, five. So there's five on each side. And then you have three other ones that are here in the middle axis here. So we will go ahead and we will remove that. That is going to give us access to the oil filter house. All right, so the idea here is we are going to go ahead, you're gonna to wanna to use a 10 millimeter wrench. 
you're going to want to hold there so not end up both on these first two up front here so you just want to i've already loosened this one here slightly before i realized i should probably record this typically what i do is i just hold it back undo it here make sure you're holding it with your hand so it doesn't go into no man's land so there we go there's one typically just keep those in here i'm gonna do the next one And there is the oil filter housing that we're gonna have to remove. So now that most of the oil gets out of the system, the next thing you want to do is you want to basically crank the engine uh, without starting the unit, which is very, very easy to do. Fortunately, Sea-Doo has given us an option for this from the factory. And the trick is what you wanna do is you wanna insert the key. You wanna hold the throttle all the way down, the throttle. Then you want to crank and you're going to get you are going to get to this mode called drown mode and in drown mode the unit basically it prevents the watercraft from starting and what that's going what that's going to do is it's going to allow us basically to be able to get as much oil as we can out of the system so again, I've pushed this up. Obviously, you do not want to crank this with uh, this drain tube all the way down, as you can see here. I mean, it's right here, so that's not going to cause any damage. And then after you're done trying to fire it up on drown mode, stick this back in the unit. Give this thing a couple more pumps. And as you can see, now there's more fluid or more oil that's pumping out of the unit. So very critical that you do that to ensure that you're getting every bit of oil out of the unit before obviously you put fresh oil in it. With the oil completely evacuated from the unit, right? So you can see here, we literally probably looks like we pulled around somewhere around three and a half quarts or so. What we wanna do next is we want to remove the filter. And you're gonna do that with that E10 tool and a socket. Okay, do that, see if I can get it in my hand. Should probably have a rag handy for this as well. the oil filter out of the place it just snaps in there next step is you're going to want to replace this o-ring uh the new kit does come with a new o-ring so that's always good i guess that's another good reason uh for using oem stuff um i i'm going to use a pick actually i don't even have to use a pick this little o-ring just pops out and then what we're going to do is we're going to replace it with the new one that came with the kit with the new filter in place, O-rings replaced. You're gonna to wanna to line this up. You wanna to begin to screw this down. Just like that. Also, I didn't show it on the video, but very critical to put a little bead of oil around those new fresh O-rings. Just makes the process much easier. All right, looks like we are fully in there now. we want to go ahead and try to uh, use drown mode once again to get oil circulating through the oil pump and fill up the filter housing so that way you don't dry start it again hold the throttle down when it goes into drown mode all right now that we have finally completed the entire oil change process you want to make sure that you have everything all nice and tight 
you want to check around the oil filter housing also you want to make sure that you know you didn't have any leaks from when you tried to run it in drown mode or when you were cranking on it it's also a great time to check hoses check fittings you know coolant lines fuel lines etc again this is a very low mileage ski doubt that there's any issue but it never hurts to double check right better to find out now while it's on land uh, than finding out the hard way that there's something wrong when you have it in the water everything looks good and looks like we're ready for the weekend hope everyone enjoys the video